It's happened to all of us. And if it hasn't happened to you yet, well, you're not playing enough radio. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Hey, welcome back guys. Jason, KM4ACK. Several years ago, I was on the phone with one of my patrons after going back and forth through several emails with him trying to solve an issue that he was having with Winlink and his radio not keying. So finally, when the email wasn't getting done, I just picked up the phone and called the guy and we started going through his system. And we were checking various config files and every time I would ask him a question, it was coming back with what I expected and what I thought it should be, but yet his radio would not PTT under any circumstances when he would try to make a uh, Winlink connection. Now, the really weird part about this is, is he had a fairly simple setup. He had his computer, he had his radio, and in between them, he had a signal link. Now, if you know anything about a signal link, it works off of Vox. So assuming that you're getting enough audio out of your computer to that signal link, it should PTT. So 99.9% .9 of the time, if the signal link won't PTT, when you uh, try to do something from the computer, chances are you don't have enough volume. The weird part was we had his volume maxed out. Every setting we could find was maxed out and he still wasn't getting the radio to go into transmit mode. So I'm kind of scratching my head, and I hesitated because I really didn't want to ask the guy this next question. But I finally did. I said, is there a green light on the front of that signal link? And there was a long pause, followed by an apology. That's right, you might have guessed it. He had not turned on the signal link. And that was the problem all along. And I bring this up because sometimes we're our own worst enemies and it's little bitty things that can really bite us in the rear end if we're not paying attention. It's happened to all of us. Now, a story that I swore I was never going to tell uh, on camera happened to me probably five or six years back. I was going out into the field to do a test and capture this on video with JS8 Call. So I, I wanted to be portable when I did this and I wanted to use a specific antenna for this test. So I go out into the field and I set up all of the equipment, the antenna, the radio, the computer, the camera, the tripods, blah, 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 blah. And I'm on the phone with a friend of mine. And for whatever reason, I could hear some other stations on JS8 call, and I was getting good decodes. But every time I would transmit, nobody was coming back to me. And I sent out three or four heartbeats before I'm sitting there really, really scratching my head because everything looks good. The computer looks good. The radio looks good. It's going into transmit mode. I'm showing power going out on the radio, and I cannot figure out why. I'm not getting any responses. And a buddy of mine uh, on the radio, and if Tim sees this, he's going to put a comment down in the bottom because uh, I'm, I'm sure he's chuckling right now because he knows the end of this story. He asked me, he says, did you hook up coax to the back of the radio? And I said, well, yeah. And I looked down and yeah, sure enough, there's coax connected to the back of the radio. But I started chasing that coax down and realized I never connected the coax to the antenna. Talk about feeling dumb. But the whole point is, it's happened to all of us. If you do enough radio, it's going to happen to you as well. So what do you do when these things happen to you? Well, I'm going to talk about two different sides of this equation uh, real quick before we wrap this video up. The first one is the radio side. If you ever find something's not quite right, stop. Stop and start double checking. The first thing I always take a look at is all of my cables. Are all of my cables connected? Are they secured well? So it, did I get the coax screwed on there uh, well enough? Or if it's a BNC type, did I get that full quarter turn 
to secure that BNC. Check and make sure that none of the cables are physically damaged. I have run into that before. In fact, that happened to me at the Christmas parade, and I didn't know it until after the fact that I had a, a BNC connector that basically had come off of the coax uh, that gave me all sorts of grief during that. But walk through all of your connections first. Double check the mode on your radio. Make sure that you're in the right mode. Uh, if you're doing digital work, just give everything a good basic once over. Often you'll find it's a little bitty setting that you just forgot that's giving you all of your issues. Another common one that I have ran into, now this can manifest itself actually in the radio or the computer or both. Uh, I've had my radio lock into transmit mode before. Uh, you'd go to, say, initiate a Winlink connection, and it keys up that first time, and it never unkeys the radio. You can almost bet every single time that it's going to be RFI getting back into your system. And there's a couple of different ways you can fix that. Uh, typically, try to shorten all of your uh, cables, so all of your USB cables. Anything that's going into that computer or into that radio, try to keep those cables as short as possible. That goes for your power cable as well. And then you can also add ferrite beads to each of those cables coming into uh, the computer or the radio to help mitigate some of that RFI as well. The last ditch option that you're going to have is try to relocate the antenna so it's a little bit further away from you. I've had success with all three of those different methods. Now, let's take a second and talk about the computer because that one can really be challenging for us. When it comes to trying to chase down an issue with a computer, document, document, document every single thing you're doing, especially if this is the first time you're trying to go through something and it's not quite working the way you expect it to. Keep notes of every single setting that you've got initially and every single setting as you change it. Talking about changing settings, Let's say you're dealing with a config file and something's not working exactly right on that computer. Uh, maybe it's, say, not transmitting the radio at all. Don't go through that config file and make five different changes at one time. Because if you make five different changes, if it does fix the problem, well, you still don't know exactly which one of those five fixed the issue that you were having. So what I like to do is go through and make one change at a time when I'm uh, chasing something down. Now, if I know that's a good change, I'm going to go ahead and document it. Otherwise, I'm going to make that change. I'm going to try again. If it works, I'm going to document that. If it doesn't, I'm going to reset that value to what it was originally, and then I'm going to move on to the next thing that I think might fix my issue. Double check every single thing down to the most minor detail a week maybe 10 days ago i put out a thing on patreon and i was talking about this little uh uv pro radio this and the vero uh n76 radio i believe and i've been playing with those writing an application to make it easier to get Linux working with those radios. So I put out this thing to patrons and actually released an application for them to test. But in there, I said something about having an issue with this particular radio. The only way I could get it to connect uh, to the Bluetooth TNC in this was to actually go into the radio and put it in pairing mode. If I did that, it would connect. If I didn't put it in pairing mode, it would connect maybe once every 10 times or so, and I was scratching my head trying to figure it out. I had done a recent firmware update testing their latest beta firmware, so I thought maybe it was something in the beta firmware that just wasn't quite right. So I put this out to patrons, and it was Gaston, the tech prepper, that sent me an email. And he said, hey man, I'm not having the same issue that you're experiencing with that radio. And he was kind enough to even share his code with me. So I'm comparing his code to my code that I'm working on, and it was almost identical. There was some minor differences in it, but nothing that should be giving me the issue that I was getting. So I stopped for a minute, and I started double-checking things. And lo and behold, wouldn't you know it, 
it was a very, very simple issue. I had unpaired the Bluetooth portion of this radio with that computer. In some portion of the testing that I was doing, I deleted the pairing. And that was causing all of the grief. As soon as I repaired that with the radio, I could then connect to it once again without having to go in and put it in pairing mode every single time. And when all else fails, just walk away. Now, I say that kind of jokingly, but seriously, sometimes just walking away from a project for five or ten minutes, maybe overnight, might be exactly what you need to do. A lot of times I do that, and when I come back to it with a fresh set of eyes, something immediately jumps out at me, and I can take care of whatever issue I was having and get on about the day. I hope you found today's information helpful. Be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.